Hello everybody. Welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Don't forget to subscribe and select alerts to keep updated. This is part 19 of the history of the gyroplane and a look at the shift in demands of gyroplane airworthiness standards and the Glasgow study into gyroplane dynamics. A significant milestone in international gyroplane airworthiness standards was the British Airworthiness and Design Standard BCAR Section T. BCAR standing for British Civil Airworthiness Requirements, Section T for Light Gyroplane. BCAR Section T and the Glasgow University Study are linked because the Glasgow University Study didn't become one body of work until it was finally published in 2010 from the collective research undertaken by the University for the UK CAA between 1993 and 2008. This was all instigated by the 1991 UK Air Accidents Investigation Branch, the AAIB, from their investigations into Air Command accidents in the early 90s. However, even though the report in its entirety wasn't published until 2010, in the intervening period there was a feedback loop to update and revise where necessary the airworthiness requirements. The university study consisted of aircraft analysis, wind tunnel and flight test activity. It was also compared existing mathematical models with actual flight test data for validation purposes. BCAR T is important because it has true international influence, with revised requirements being adopted in Australia and Canada, as well as being recognised in Germany. The aim of the dynamics study was to establish the general stability characteristics of a gyroplane and then determine which aspects of its design were most influential on its dynamic characteristics. The research has been hailed as revolutionary, although I have to be honest, whilst the quantitative data generated does fall into that category, it seems to me that the outcomes are areas that have been investigated before. Worse for the study, in some places the quantitative data and its conclusion have been ignored. Tailplanes and the assessment of the Air Command being a case in point. The major conclusion of the report was a demonstration that the vertical location of the centre of mass in relation to the assumed propeller thrust line is the key parameter leading to aircraft instability. This was a particularly important finding since the incorporation of more powerful engines and larger propellers into gyroplane design had resulted in the propeller being raised to ensure clearance of the craft's keel, thereby raising the centre of mass and reducing stability. One consequence of BCAR Section T is because of this formalisation and fairly rigid set of airworthiness requirements mean that trying to demonstrate your design meets that standard becomes very costly and therefore in countries that have adopted the standard safety may well be improved in certain areas however the design and variety of aircraft available to fly has been much restricted. The great irony is that it's restricted the designs that aligned to the major conclusion of that report from years before. You have to agree that safety has improved although some of the bars were set exceptionally low and one can't help feeling that some of these wins were obvious low-hanging fruits. Had some of those involved with gyroplanes decades ago been slightly more alive to obvious issues, we would have a more diverse and healthier gyroplane scene today. 